This program was brought to you by Penny Mac TPO. Visit tpo.pennymac.com to learn more about becoming a partner and starting your journey to greatness. With the people, products, and technology to take you there, it's why they say, at Penny Mac, greatness lives here. Welcome to The Interest. I'm Mike Savino. J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon was one of the first executives in finance to warn about a recession, and today he seemed to double down. Dimon shared his prediction while telling investors that J.P. Morgan Chase's earnings fell by 28% in the second quarter. He also said several factors are causing an up and down market right now and vowed during today's earnings call that the bank is prepared for whatever happens. Now, the bank reported $8.6 billion in net income in the second quarter, which is actually up 4% from the first quarter. But as we said at the top, that's down 28% when compared with the second quarter of 2021. Diamond noted the U.S. economy continues to grow, the labor market is strong, and consumer spending remains healthy. But he also voiced concerns about inflation, waning co consumer confidence, and uncertainty about interest rates. He also pointed to the ongoing war in Ukraine and its impact on food and energy prices. He warned that this combination of problems is very likely to have negative consequences on the global economy sometime down the road. Diamond also criticized new federal regulations that require banks to up their financial reserves. He warned that this will likely drive down the number of loans that banks can originate. It's especially bad for lower income mortgages. will originate, but the balance on the books will probably come down. Elsewhere, Wells Fargo got a huge legal victory after a judge dismissed the lawsuit aiming to hold the bank accountable for the 2008 economic crash. A group of investors were seeking millions of dollars in damages for the plunging value of one safe residential mortgage-backed security. But a judge dismissed the lawsuit and the large part of a second one, saying that those issues were resolved in prior litigation. Wells Fargo previously faced two class action investor suits and a complaint from the National Credit Union Administration over defective mortgages. The bank also agreed in 2018 to pay $2 billion in civil penalties to settle a Justice Department claim that it had knowingly made and sold residential mortgage loans that misstated income information and were lower quality than it had represented. Despite the victory, the judge did allow a German-backed investor to sue Wells Fargo over the bank's alleged failure to act upon learning that servicers for 17 trusts had liquidated over 3,000 loans with defective documentation instead of having sellers repurchase them. And finally, mortgage rates jumped back up after sliding to start the summer. The average rate for the 30-year fixed was 5.51% last week, up from 5.3% the prior week. A year ago, that number sat at 2.88%. The 15-year fix made a similar climb. It averaged 4.67 last week, up from 4.45. And the 15-year fix was just 2.22% a year ago. Home prices also remain high, growing at an annualized rate of 19.4% in the second quarter. Add in a CPI of 9.1%, and the summer buying season has gotten off to a slow start. As households pay much more for cars, clothing, food, gasoline, and services, there are fewer dollars left over from each paycheck at a time when housing affordability is a growing challenge. Yesterday, we reported that mortgage applications last week fell by 4%, continuing a slide in origination. This program was brought to you by PennyMac TPO. Visit tpo.pennymac.com to learn more about becoming a partner and starting your journey to greatness. For more on these and all of today's top stories, go to mortgagenewsnetwork.com.